After a busy few weeks spent attaching Mechazilla's two rocket-catching arms to a carriage-like backbone, SpaceX has begun the process of installing the integrated structure on Starbase's 450-foot-tall Starship launch tower. Once complete, SpaceX will have created a first-of-its-kind launch tower designed to stack and manipulate Starships and super-heavy boosters in far worse conditions than cranes can tolerate and catch both rocket stages out of the mid-air. Referred to internally as chopsticks, the giant pair of steel arms will join a third quick disconnect arm tasked with stabilizing Super Heavy during Starship installation and feeding the reusable upper stage power, comms links and some 1,200 tons of propellant. Together, they will enable SpaceX to attempt Starship's first orbital test flights and perhaps one day help the next generation rocket launch in almost any weather and achieve unprecedented rapid reusability. But first, SpaceX needs to finish installing and rigging the massive structure. Beginning on August 29th, after less than three months of assembly, SpaceX installed Starship's QD arm on the launch tower. About a month later, the QD arm was mostly finished off with the installation of a claw-like grabber, meant to stabilize Super Heavy and is now only missing its namesake Quick Disconnect, an actuating device that will connect Starship to the pad and rapid disconnect at liftoff. Assembly of the last three major components of Mechazilla, a carriage-like structure and two giant arms, began in July and, much like the Tower QD arm, wrapped up about three months later. On October the 6th, SpaceX began combining those three main parts by flipping the carriage, a bit like a spine and rib cage with skates, that attached to rails on the launch tower's legs, vertical and staging it on a temporary support structure. Both chopsticks were then flipped into the correct orientation and moved into position with separate cranes for installation on the carriage slash backbone. From start to finish, that process took around 9 to 10 days and culminated with the installation of two giant cylindrical pins with built-in bearings on October the 14th and 15th. By the 17th, both cranes had detached from the assembled Mechazilla arms and carriage and were leaving it precisely balanced against the support structure and more or less freestanding. Just a few days later, after a last second attempt on October the 19th was called off as night fell, SpaceX tried again on the 20th and completed the first step of installing Mechazilla's catch arms on the launch tower without apparent issue. Lightly weighing several hundred tons, Starbase's largest crane lifted the massive structure up and over an adjacent launch mount and then carefully inched it closer to the tower. Before the lift, SpaceX technicians staged 12 skates on three of the tower's four legs, two upper and two lower skates per leg. Once the carriage was in the right position, workers were able to wrap its upper arms around the tower and began connecting the carriage to those skates with several more large pins. It's unclear how much progress was made in the hours after the lift, but it appears that the carriage has been detached to maybe four or five of the six upper skates. Work continued well after nightfall, meaning that it will likely only take a few days to complete all 12 connections. However, even after all skates are installed, the carriage, arms and skates will still be hanging by crane or winch. To truly install the structure on the tower, SpaceX will have to finish installing and rigging thousands of feet of steel cable that via a complex system of pulleys will connect to powered draw works that will support the carriage and catch arms and lift the assembly up and down the tower like an elevator car. The catch arms and carriage will also need to be mated with a giant cable carrier already staged on the tower that will connect the structure to ground and control systems. In addition to refining its launch tower, SpaceX took another step on Thursday evening towards validating the rocket engine technology that will power its Starship rocket. For the first time, engineers at the company ignited a vacuum version of a Raptor engine that had been attached to the Starship upper stage. The test firing at sunset in South Texas lasted only a few seconds, but it appears to have been successful and it checks another box in a series of technical tests SpaceX must complete before launching Starship on a super heavy rocket for an orbital test flight. This may happen sometime in early 2022. SpaceX has test-fired its Starship vehicle with Raptor engines before, of course. In some prototype test flights, the vehicle has ascended up to 10 kilometers under the power of the three Raptor sea-level engines. 
But it is quite another thing to test a rocket with a version of Raptor optimized to operate in vacuum of space. Rocket engines have many parts of course, but the largest and most prominent is the nozzle, which channels the flow of exhaust gas. This exhaust originates in the combustion chamber, where oxidizer and propellant combust. This exhaust gas is then pushed through a narrow opening called a throat to accelerate it. Now, traveling supersonic, the exhaust expands as it enters the nozzle, where the longer and wider the nozzle is, the faster the exhaust moves. Foster gas coming out of the rocket engine is good because it delivers more thrust. More thrust means your rocket can lift more mass. An expanded nozzle, therefore, means better performance. So why don't all rocket engines have giant nozzles? Due to a phenomenon known as flow separation, which happens when the flow of gas inside an engine separates from the nozzle walls. This can induce turbulence and vibrations. In a worst case scenario, it could result in the engine blowing itself up. There is no absolute value for when this occurs, but the risk of flow separation increases when the pressure of exhaust exiting the nozzle falls below 50% of the ambient pressure. This isn't a problem in space, where the atmospheric pressure is essentially zero, but at sea level, the larger nozzle, the greater the risk of flow separation. The most common way to address this issue is to design a rocket first stage with engines optimized for performance at sea level and an upper stage with vacuum optimized engines. The Falcon 9 rocket, for example, has a first stage with nine Merlin engines with smaller nozzles that do all the work in the lower atmosphere and a Merlin vacuum engine with a much larger nozzle for outer space. SpaceX's Starship upper stage is designed to fly in both thick atmosphere and space. It aims to solve the nozzle size conundrum by flying with three sea level Raptor engines and three vacuum Raptor engines. Thursday's test marked the first time one of the vacuum engines was attached to a Starship vehicle and test fired. The most experienced US upper stage engine, the RL-10, manufactured by Aerojet Rocketdyne, has a massive expansion ratio. In that, its nozzle size is much larger than its throat. So, this engine can only be tested on the ground in a large vacuum chamber. SpaceX's test on Thursday took place outside in South Texas, a few feet above sea level. Elon Musk said the company plans to make the first orbital launch of the Starship flight next month, subject to SpaceX getting the necessary regulatory approval. SpaceX will need FAA approval, which requires SpaceX to demonstrate that it has taken all the necessary safety precautions to ensure that there is minimal risk of something going wrong during launch. And that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be updated with the next space and SpaceX news, subscribe and hit the notification feature. See you next time.